Hey, what's up guys? My name is Chris Trini for Chris Court Productions, and I'm here to just give you a basic overview on how I made this. Uh, this is not really a tutorial. Um, I mean, it is, but it's it's very um, quick, I guess. It's more of an overview. If you want to see a more in-depth uh, look on how to make something like this, where you actually see everything step by step uh, from scratch, you know, where to get your images from, the best uh, sources for textures, and all of that good stuff. I did make a tutorial uh, not too long ago, and you can find it here. I'll, I'll link it somewhere on the screen. Click that, and it's a three-part tutorial. It's a little bit long, but, you know, it's worth it. I, I, I really do think that there is some useful information that you guys could use if you're starting off. But if you're a little bit more advanced and you can, you know, kind of follow along without having to see every single step, then this tutorial is for you. Now there are also some tips in here that are just useful to have for matte paintings in general. So I hope you guys find this interesting. So let's get started. What I did here is uh, I'm usually pretty messy, uh, but this time I really try my best to organize each layers and you know uh, naming them in a way that makes sense. So that they're not just like random letters and words. They're actually you know color correction or car or whatever. Uh, now there are a few things to keep in mind. The first thing that I do when starting off from scratch and I want to create a map painting is kind of have an idea of where everything is going to go and what kind of map painting you're doing. Uh, so what kind of environment it is, is it a forest, is it a city, is it post-apocalyptic, is it uh, fantasy, sci-fi, you know, what kind of map painting is it? Now another thing is where your focal point is, where each object is going to be placed. And another important thing to know is where your source of light is. So what's illuminating your map painting? Because that will that will make sense once you start seeing how items are placed. It wouldn't look right if this building was facing the other way because the shadows are on this side and the lighter side, the more illuminated side is facing facing the correct way, which is, you know, facing the sun. It looks like these cars, uh, the car, this car over here and this truck are um, facing the right way, but they really weren't. They were just flat and I added this uh, edge of uh, brightness to the layers. You can see that this tr this side of the truck is darker than this side. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in just a second. Also, you notice that these elements are actually casting a shadow onto the surface. You know, all of these are. And that's very easy, and even this, uh, this street light has its own little shadow here. Uh, this is a very easy technique that will help sell the effect, that will help uh, integrate the elements more with the environment. Um, so like this bus is, is more to the ground because of that shadow versus, uh, let me just shut off those shadows that I used. See, now you see the difference. It's it's almost like, you know, it would just cut and it was just placed on there and it doesn't really look like it's really touching anything. So what I did here is I created a new solid and I just created a simple mask to imitate the, the shape of what the bottom of this bus would look like and then I made it so that it would look like it was cast onto the surface. So let me turn that back on just a shadow of the bus and if I select it you can see that I created this this weird shape so do keep in mind the shape of your element and also the shape of the surface that's being casted on so to me this still doesn't look quite right I mean these tires are really not I don't know they're, they, they seem like they're not really touching the pipe and, and touching this side of the concrete so what I did is I added a new solid same technique as the shadow and what I did was I masked it around more specifically around the tire and any part of the element that's touching with the ground. And what this does, it, it kind of imitates what ambient occlusion would do. Like if you're using Element 3D, for example, uh, you're, you're familiar with ambient occlusion and you know what that does. But this is just a way to create it with just 2D layers and make it more realistic. So that's pretty much the basic idea of what went into creating the rest of these shadows. Um, all these are just solids with their transparency dropped down a little bit and with just feathered masks to imitate the shape of, of what the shadow would look like. Now what I said earlier is to keep in mind where the source of light is because th this shadow is going this way, this shadow is going that way, this shadow is going this way, and that shadow is going this way right here. It wouldn't look right if the shadow was going this way or you know not, not the correct way of how it would be casted if the source of light was from here. So that's why it's important to keep in mind. Also another thing is you want to create this edge of light. Okay, as you see here, these are two layers that form this uh, car element. It's really simple. What I did to create that edge of brightness is I duplicated the layer and I dropped down the brightness and I just created a secondary mask and I subtracted this part right here. 
and then feather it out. Now there are a few more things I want to talk about before I uh, leave you guys. Um, I'm trying to make this as quick as possible, but I want to talk about this bus over here. And I actually took this picture when I went to uh, Belize. Here's the original picture. And I took this with my, um, my iPhone, my iPhone 4S. I just was walking, I saw this bus, thought it looked interesting, and I just took a picture of it. There's an extra level of grunginess added to it. And it was really easy. What I did here is I just, I just overlaid uh, a few like grunge textures onto this and I used the corner pin effect to you know make it look like it was the right type of perspective like it was just on that surface and then I just masked around it and that was pretty much it but one, one thing I want to mention about using corner pin is uh, it is a little bit tricky let's see if I do go to the actual textures this mask doesn't seem to quite match what it appears to be and that's because the corner pin effect kinda just freaks out on masks so you need to treat it as as if it was without the corner pin effect so you can you can see that I added um, a mask to subtract the window area so that's what this uh, this smaller rectangular shape is uh, doing uh, this is not perfect this was a pretty quick matte painting you can see some of it just overlaying on the tire uh, which is okay you know it could be the, the the rubber itself peeling off or whatever excuse you want to use but the truth is is that this matte painting was done in less than an hour and I just um, kind of skipped over some details over here, not going to lie. But one more thing that I want to just uh, share with you guys is, um, uh, well, a few more things actually, and then I promise you I'm going to leave you guys alone. This road here seems like, you know, very complicated, like how did, how did I do this? And this is really easy. It's actually five pictures put together of a real uh, road that was um, affected by an earthquake. And uh, I can isolate all those layers for you guys so you can see what I'm talking about. And uh, there's that one last piece. So there you go. That's pretty much it. These are five pictures, and I just masked them, masked different sections out, uh, rotated them, scaled them, and placed them in different positions to create kind of this landscape. One last thing that stands out is uh, you know the building and the sun over here. For the sun, I just used optical flares. This building right here is actually a building in Japan that survived the atomic blast. But since it is recognizable, like uh, some people know this building because of the history of it. Uh, I did cut off like the top of it when I masked it out so it's more generic and it's not you know as specific but that's really it that's what went into uh, making this uh, like I said you know it's it's pretty easy uh, once you just grasp the, the, the few basic concepts and all that is is just know your source of light know where have an idea of where everything's going to be placed um, and you know once you start drawing out yourself shadows out of solids and you can do the same technique with different textures it really comes down to the fact that these are all just pictures that are cut out of their environment and placed into a new one. But that's that's the beauty of it. You're you know you're creating something that makes sense out of just completely unrelated pictures. You know, and you're grabbing elements from those pictures and putting them into one big picture. But okay, enough of me rambling. I really hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial and found it helpful. You know, like I said, this was a very quick overview. But if you do want to see a more in-depth tutorial, there is a three-part tutorial on how to create a map painting, which is a different map painting that I did a short while ago. And if you are new to After Effects, I really encourage you to watch my uh, Learn After Effects in 20 Minutes tutorial. Uh, I know there's a lot of tutorials out there to learn After Effects, but there really isn't one 20-minute uh, video to just show you everything and get you started. Because I know that's how I was when I first opened up After Effects. I just wanted to get to the explosions, get to the, all the, the cool stuff. But truth is, if you don't know the basics, you know, you, you, you really can't do anything. So that's just to get the basics out of the way so that you can do some creative stuff. All right, I hope this was short enough for you guys and that you uh, learned something from this. Again, my name is Chris Trini for Chris Core Productions, and I will see you next time.